what is good Tesla family it's Ray J back with another video and in this one, I'm going to be talking about the one and only Tesla stock and what you should be looking after for the future I'm also going to do some in-depth technical analysis and show you what the chart is essentially telling us and why on earth it actually seems more probable we might see some green for next week and a little bit more green than red during the earlier days I'm also going to talk about what the news is saying about a recession for the month of July and why July may actually lead to some bearish price action by the time we get to the second half of it I'm also going to talk about some important important things Elon Musk said about uh, Tesla, even though he hasn't been active on his Twitter page for quite a bit of time. Now, before I break any of this down, before I get into any details, I do have to mention a couple of things real quick. Firstly, I'm not a financial planner. Don't take any of this as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire Tesla community as a whole. And the last thing is, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo Moo link down below and into the description. If you sign up for Moomoo Moo with the link down below and deposit $100 into the account, you're guaranteed up to 10 free stocks, each worth up to $3,500. And the best part is, out of these 10 free stocks, Mumu will just choose 5 of them for you, but 5 of them are also going to come from the wheel right over here. This means that you could get 5 free Tesla shares, 5 free Apple shares, 5 free AMC shares, and so on and so forth in this limited time offer that ends in just 2 weeks. So please check it out before they run out. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. So... Looking at Tesla, we're up about 1.24% for the day, a little bit red in the after hours. And I was a little bit worried that we might actually break a little bit down uh, in the downward direction starting this month, especially considering the fact that we had a long weekend. Uh, we have a long weekend coming up for July 4th and other factors like that. Instead, Tesla held up pretty darn well. And it's actually respecting kind of like an inverse head and shoulders formation and that's kind of an indication that we might actually get a nice push going into next week just temporarily so it's probably going to see a temporary bounce but it's going to be temporary because of this right here now we have a gap up here see this gap that's going to take us above 700 i believe this gap is going to get filled next week and we're probably going to see us kind of trading in this range right here but that doesn't mean that it's going to last forever because by the second, third, and fourth weeks of July, we might actually get a break to the downside based off what the uh, chart is showing us. That's because Tesla also has this gap way down here, and it's probably going to push Tesla down below that 650 range. So that is a bearish indication for the later month. But before we get there, like I said before, we should get uh, some relief until we get there. Now, if you look at the SPY and the NASDAQ, very, very interesting things are going on. Now, it, it, does, it doesn't necessarily resemble a perfect uh, inverse head and shoulders. Yeah, I mean, it's almost trying to do that. But the SPY actually managed to push up right during the last hour and actually held up pretty well. I mean, it's not in the most ideal states, but it does look like it's possible for this thing to get back to that uh, 384, 385 range. Maybe that's where our key kind of like resistance level could be. A bit of a push up maybe one last time for the start of the week before we see even more downside continuing because the spy also has i think a gap down here somewhere like right over here in that in the 360 range so it is most likely going to come back down later on and it may even make new lows for the month of july based off the data we're seeing but i can't guarantee that yet until we get the data now nasdaq same story it does look like it has some potential for a little bit more of a push to the upside maybe a little bit more room to push up going into next week for the next couple of days but then i do see it kind of filling this gap down here later on in july probably after like the first couple of weeks maybe by week two or later so i am seeing a similar move throughout the entire market as the market is moving very collectively at least for now so with that said why do i think that the market may end up dropping a little bit later on in july before we get a bullish first week and i think that i'm sorry after the bullish uh, first week so the first week should be bullish for july most likely then the second third and fourth weeks should maybe be the time we start to drop i want to talk about some things elon musk also said that are very important and actually relates to this because right now the atlanta fed gdp tracker is showing that the u.s economy is likely already in a recession and this won't be confirmed until the end of july and they're seeing that the second quarter is running into a negative 2.1 percent now 
there are different ways we could actually look at this because Jerome Powell did make some important claims about how this could actually affect supply chains. And this could actually cause the supply chains to kind of remain stagnant, but demand for particular goods all over the USA will most likely drop during this recessionary phase. And if that's the case, it could actually be a mechanism that, that may end up dropping down inflation. Once again, not guaranteed. That's just kind of something that Jerome Powell mentioned as a possibility. But if that is the case, it could be kind of like a case for a quicker recovery towards the end of the year instead of the recovery starting in 2023. I mean, we'll have to wait and see how this goes. But I do see that as a possibility, which could be a good sign. Now, the Fed is probably going to have to continue to be hawkish maybe going into July as well. So that could be another bearish catalyst. But I want to talk about Tesla in a very different state because when we look at Tesla, uh, let me show you this first before I get into the article. We have earnings coming out on July 25th, 2022. And I believe that's going to be for Q2. Now, this is just the estimated date. It could change as we get closer, but that's going to be big because how are the earnings really going to come out? Now, the unfortunate thing is the fact that there were these big lockdowns in China. And there's been a lot of talk that the lockdowns are going to cause like kind of ugly earnings for them. And I don't really like to look at it that way, but that's just how these articles are reporting it. But in my opinion, I don't look at it that way because this was something that was out of their control and we shouldn't necessarily attack the company for that. But big mainstream articles are going to use this as a mechanism to kind of bash Tesla, make big articles, and it could lead to some panic. Now, I don't think it's logical for Tesla's share price to crash if it has a bad earnings due to these issues out of their control, but the market likes to be un uh, illogical during many situations. Now, Elon Musk also mentioned a couple of things back in May when the lockdowns were going on. And he mentioned the fact that Tesla has a very good trajectory to keep on growing. But in regards of a potential recession, they are going to make different business changes, such as changes to the particular salaries and their, their growth rate may not be the same. There may be some adjustments here and there, but overall, they will continue to grow. Now, Elon Musk also stated in a, a video interview with Tesla owners of Silicon Valley that the two new factories were losing them billions of dollars due to battery shortages and supply disruptions from China and so on and so forth. Elon Musk also said that they struggled at one point to ramp up production in Austin for the Model Y SUVs and other new cells that are basically needed to integrate in the battery packs. So as a result of this, I'm going to be honest with you, the earnings report coming out from Tesla may not look too good because of all these hard things that are coming out. I really understand the pain, but this is no reason for you to hate on the company or do anything like that. Now, as a result of earnings like this, I mean, the market is very illogical sometimes, and they may not even take what happened in China into account that much, and they may try to bash Tesla. So be prepared for that. And that's the reason why I do believe just because the first week, maybe first week week and a half of july are kind of bullish which they could be it doesn't mean we're going to be bullish for all of july in fact i see a lot of these earnings coming out from other big tech companies and the mega caps being as mechanisms that, that can actually push the market down during the later weeks so that's kind of like what the market is waiting for particularly by i would say week two to week three of july going into week four as well now when it comes to elon musk on twitter we haven't seen the guy Again, I mean, it's been a very long time since we last saw him tweet over 10 days from this point. He hasn't even liked anything for almost 10 days. So I really hope he's doing all right. I actually presume that the quarter was very, very hard and he was very busy. So he didn't even put his time into uh, Twitter because like he said before, Twitter is kind of like a war zone. There are times where he gets a headache. He actually mentioned this in, in an interview once, but He's a very busy man, so I shouldn't really look at this as a bad thing. I really wish that he takes a break from it. He relaxes. And if he does return, I really like to see what updates he comes up with next. There also is a possibility that he has a big update that's, that's just waiting, and he's kind of kind of creating suspense to really bring it about. But I don't really see this as a bad thing, like some people are saying. It has been a while. He's probably busy as the end of the quarter is here. So we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully, he comes back around July 4th. I really wish the best for him. I also wish the best for each and every one of you. So with that said and done, I want to thank all of you for listening. Just note that going into next week, we're, we're kind of completing. Wait, let me bring up Tesla's chart. Uh, we're kind of completing right over here, this inverse head and shoulders. It does look very, very prominent. 
Tesla is starting to hold up a lot better. We actually bounced off 666 many times, and this is actually higher than that 656 range. So that's kind of like the head that we formed. That was kind of a confirmation. And today kind of confirmed the completion of this second, I'm sorry, the right shoulder right here. So Tesla should push up to the gap fill hopefully by Monday which means Tesla could be back in the 700s. It might rally temporarily, especially with the new month, the new quarter. But the later weeks of the month may be even more bearish. We may end up filling the gap back down in that 650 range. So just to make it simple, I see Tesla pushing up to the 700s for the first week or so of July. It could kind of bounce between 700 and 715, maybe 720, maybe go a little higher than that. But then later on during the month, by the time we approach the middle of the month, maybe later. I wouldn't be surprised if this thing pushes all the way down to that 650 range, depending on the news, depending on if a recession is truly announced and other factors like that. With that said and done, it's not Tesla's fault. The overall market, okay, it moves collectively, right? Big companies tend to buy in at the same time. And right now, uh, the bears, they kind of gain a little bit of more control than the bulls, but I do think the bulls will give us a little bit of temporary relief before some red comes later on. With that said and done, please enjoy your weekend. Please enjoy your Friday, and I will definitely see you guys in the next video. Tesla to the moon, and peace out.